Chelsea, 1102 West Street in Wilmington. The Sals tonight meet Middletown High School at Middletown, Delaware. Kickoff is scheduled in about 30 minutes. And now with tonight's preview, here is WDEL sportsman Fred Eng. Fantastic, unbelievable, incredible, you name it. But ever since Bill Billings of Middletown High School came on the Delaware scene nine years ago, those are some of the adjectives used to describe this man's amazing feats on the high school gridiron. Bill Billings has compiled statistics that would make practically every high school coach in the country drool with envy. In nine years as head coach at Middletown, Bill Billings has won 80 football games while dropping only three. He's won eight conference championships and has never lost a conference game. Amazing? You bet it is. But what makes up an individual like Bill Billings? Does he really have any magic power? Just what is it that separates him from thousands of other coaches who go year to year taking their lumps? We talked to Bill Billings this week, and here's what we heard. Well, Bill, in the Delaware High School football ranks, you're known as a genius, the miracle worker, or you name it. But for one thing, it's uh, really for certain the high school football fans are baffled at your outstanding record. How do you do it? Well, we that's hard to answer. Uh, we have had uh, real good football players here. Uh, we've tried to develop the right mental attitude. We've had the fans in this town back these boys. And they've made them feel like they're really something or part of the community. And uh, uh, there's so many things. uh had a lot of good help. It's just hard to say what it is. Bill, you know one thing in, uh, as a former coach, I think one of the difficulties of a coach is evaluating personnel. For instance, you look constantly throughout the year for a boy that may play the quarterback position. You're looking for someone that's a uh, complete general type of a uh, character, somebody that has some overall athletic ability. And to me, this is one of the things that you've had an outstanding uh, record in doing, is spotting your personnel. You've got here in a school the size of Middletown, you only have around 250 boys, but yet year after year you come up with a fantastic team. For instance, I, mean, I remember a couple years ago you had players that were roughly 160 pounds playing the tackle spot. Now that just isn't the average thing that you would do as a coach. Uh, usually at the tackle spot you're looking for the great big player. So uh, this is an interesting thing on your part of coaching. How, how do you explain this type of thing? Well, we have to take here... Uh what we get, and um, we we try to fit the best boys possible into our offensive or defensive uh, uh, setup. And sometimes you just look out there, and the boy may weigh 150, 160, and he may be the boy to play tackle because he comes closer to what you want than anything else. Uh, particularly size, and the only thing he may have a little quickness or. They may have a little uh, know-how. Knowledge in sports means a lot. We, we've had kids here with, with know-how that were a little tough that uh, could handle bigger boys. And, uh, that means a lot. It means a lot. To, uh, I tell the kids it means a lot to go out and uh, watch television on uh, Saturday and Sunday. and They pick up a vast knowledge of the game, and they, they know what's going on. And uh, these, these things add up. Uh, we just... Uh, try to fit the best boys possible and we can't recruit and don't work there but uh, we fit the best boys possible in, in the position that we think is best. Well Bill you mentioned the number of players that you have uh, in the school as far as you have roughly around 250 boys of this number how many come out usually year to year for Middletown football? Well we get around 70 75 boys out uh, we get we feel like we get one out of every four boys in school after football. Pride must be a very important factor here in Middletown. Anybody who can make the team is probably very proud to be associated with such a team. Would you agree? I, I think it is very proud. They, yet they're not, uh, they're not overly proud. They don't, it's not a sickening type thing. Uh, nobody around school, uh, they, don't, they don't act that way. We, we teach that also. You've got to be a good winner as well as a good loser. But uh, we, we teach them that... Uh, but this is uh, one thing that uh, they must accept their their uh, victories and all with uh, uh, humility and just letting be noticed if they possibly can as far as being a student around their school. This is Fred Eng. We've been talking with Bill Billings on the Bill Billings success story. Stay tuned and we'll be back in a moment.
say, did you ever watch a quarterback drop back to pass? Sure you have. But did you ever think there's one thing that quarterback needs? It's called protection. Those linemen don't give him a block and boom, it's all over. We all may not be quarterbacks, but there's one kind of protection we need, and that's insurance. Insurance for our lives, our homes, and almost anything you can name. Now, if you're like me, you'd like to know someone you can depend on to fill you in on all your needs. Well, look no longer. Tom DeLucia of the Rockwell Insurance Agency is your man. Call Sally's Brad Tom DeLucia at 655-7151 today for an appointment. It's one phone call that will make you feel like you just threw a 75-yard touchdown pass. That's Tom DeLucia of the Rockwell Insurance Agency, 655-7151. Bill, football, I think you'll agree, is a, quite a psychological game. And by that I mean that players from week to week have to get up for a football game. They've got to have the correct mental, to, mental attitude to go into a ball game. For instance, to use an example on the college level, a couple of weeks ago, the University of Delaware was well favored to be a team like Lehigh, but all of a sudden they go up and they come out in a flat situation and they, they lose the ball game 36 to 13. One of the amazing things about your record is in winning the 80 games that you've done here at Middletown, you know that other teams are up to get you every week. Anybody that beats Middletown has done the greatest job of the year. If they beat you in one game and lose the rest, they've had a successful season. How do you get the players from one week to the next keeping mentally tough? Uh, we keep reminding them of these things that uh, happen to Delaware. We, we bring out the uh, Saturday, uh, well, usually Monday or Tuesday, we start telling them about all the upsets that happened on Saturday. Uh, one of the greatest ones we told them was about Southern Mississippi, or what, you know, was it Southern? Whatever it was, beating the uh, University of Mississippi. And uh, after Mississippi beat them 65 to nothing last year, I think this team beat them 30 to 14. And uh, we, we just bring these things out and tell them anything can happen in football. And uh, not to be surprised if anybody came down here and, and uh, fired up and really looked like a uh, world beater because teams can get that high. And uh, we just try to get them prepared to, to meet any type of thing. We almost failed in one ball game. We were preaching that too much uh, and not taking anything away from the team. But, we, we preached all week keeping the score down against Del Castle, and it, it really backfired on us. We almost didn't get the score up when we were talking about flat. We were flat the night before Delaware was flat and lost the ball game. I guess we we glad we can we, we got out and won uh, after preaching that kind of foolishness, and I'll never do that again. You mentioned preparing for Del Castle. Some coaches I know, even though they're not uh, too many of them, that don't believe it, and that is scouting. You have to go out week to week to scout another team. How do you do it here in your league? Uh, Fred, we send a, a coach out every week to scout. Sometimes uh, it's possible for uh, two or three of us to scout. And the old Diamond State Conference, I was, was unable to scout myself. But uh, since uh, we're in this Blue Hen Conference and we play on Friday night and the other schools play on Saturday, I've been able to do some scouting. However, no one, particularly one of us, does all of the scouting. Uh, we look uh, we look at uh, all the teams and quite a uh, all the coaches look at the different ball clubs at various times. Well, what the best teams on the schedule we try to look at at least two or three times. And this Sally's team we we've, we've seen five times. Uh, we feel like it, they are the best, and we don't know whether that's enough or not. But uh, we felt like it, uh, we need to look at them as many times as possible. Well, Bill, there's no doubt about it. Here in Middletown, the people must really have some great thoughts about you. Since you've been here in your nine years, you've won 80 football games, and you've only lost three. How do the people in Middletown react? Well, I tell you, Fred, I think the people in Middletown are the greatest people I've ever seen anywhere. Uh, they reacted before I ever played the first ball game. They, uh, they came into this town, and they accepted this with open arms, and... They were just great folks right from the beginning, before I ever had the first practice, and I just can't say enough about Middletown or the people in it. They, uh, many of them are just crazy about the team. Of course, there's some that you find anywhere that don't particularly care, but uh, for the most part, the people are really uh, fantastic uh, fans, and they've just been great, and I just came to the right place is the only thing I can say. 
Well, Bill, there's no doubt about it. No coach can do it on his own. And I'm sure that you have a few coaches that you would like to mention. I know this year you have John Favero, who is a former University of Delaware star. Would you like to mention some of the people on your staff? Well, you mentioned John, and he's done a fantastic job. He came here out of college, usually a boy out of college. Uh, takes him a little while to get uh, acclimated, but John just came right in and just took over. He gets along beautifully with the boys, and he's really a fine uh, person. He's just one of the best, and uh, he's a great coach, and the kids listen to him. Uh, others, Joe Belay, fine, uh, real fine person. Joe comes to us from uh, Maryland, and uh, it's his first year over here, and uh, he's done a fine job. Uh, Jack Barcelone, who uh, also was at the University of Delaware, till he played up there till he, he was injured, and Harley Taylor's uh, in charge of our ninth grade. And uh, these people, uh, Richard Green, another coach, he's a coach of the cross country, but uh, he helps us uh, be on the bench tonight, uh, helping us uh, with our injured players, and he's done a real fine job for us, and always willing to help. Richard's a, a real fine person. This is Fred Eng. We've been talking with Bill Billings on the Bill Billings success story. Stay tuned, and we'll be back in a moment. This is the Salesianum football preview with with another football season for Salesianum. You're right. But you know what? Right around the corner is Salesianum basketball. And with the Sal's under new coach Frank Brady, believe me, anything can happen. What I'm leading to is, how would you like to have a Sally's basketball schedule dropped to you in the mail? Well, Tom DeLucia of the Rockwell Insurance Agency, our sponsor on Sally's preview all season, will be glad to drop one to you. Just put Sally's basketball on a postcard care of W-D-E-L, and Tom DeLucia will be glad to see you get yours soon. By the way, the next time you're thinking of insurance, why not get in touch with Tom DeLucia of the Rockwell Insurance Agency at 655-7151. I guarantee he'll help with all your insurance needs. Well, Bill, I'm leading up to the big question here, and that is tonight you play Salesianum. Salesianum has been a team that's won five games, have lost three this season, but they're not the team that they think you saw last year. Even though they've dropped three games, they seem to work more as a unit. They've had some uh, unfortunate circumstances there where in the last two ball games they had to block punt, cost them the ball game late in the ball game where they were actually ahead in both games, but the block punt cost them the game. What do you expect to see from Salazian tonight? I expect to see good hard running backs are harder than we faced all year by far. Uh, fast uh, backs faster than we faced and I expect our boys will be hit harder than they've been hit all year. I expect to see a class ball club uh, out here on this field tonight playing against us. Well folks, you've heard it. Bill Billings comes to Delaware and in nine years they win 80 ball games and lose only three. Quite a record. Tonight they meet Salazianum. Can they do it again? Well, stay tuned now for all the action from Middletown High School Field. This has been Fred Eng on Salazianum Preview. WBEL sportsman Fred Eng, presented by Tom DeLucia of the R.H. Rockwell Agency, 1102 West Street in Wilmington, Delaware. This is the final preview show of the season, and Tom DeLucia hopes that the comments of the coaches have added to your enjoyment of the football games. And now... WDEL Sports is ready to bring you the play-by-play description of the Salesian and Middletown game. Tonight's game brought to you by Burns and McBride, your SO Heating Oil Distributor, 609 North DuPont Street in Wilmington, and by Chalcross Chevrolet, Delaware's little dealer in Middletown, Delaware. Now for the action to Middletown High School Field and Bill Piper. Hello, everybody. This is Bill Piper with Fred A. We're here tonight at Middletown High School Field before a crowd hoping the rain pulled off after most of the afternoon and early evening downpour. A crowd estimated in the neighborhood of, we would have to say, 8,000. The field spread looks as if it's in pretty good shape considering the rain this afternoon. Only a couple of muddy spots out around the 40s on each side. But other than that, the field seems to have drained well and we're looking ahead to a big game here tonight naturally for number one in the state. Uh, that it does, Bill. Like they say, the good Lord must be a football fan, especially tonight. Uh, the weather we saw this afternoon, it looked very doubtful that we'd have a good game out here tonight is weather-wise, but now it's perfect football weather. Well, both teams have already been out on the field for their pre-game warm-up. We have the officials gathered down here on the sideline, and it won't be long before kickoff, which is scheduled 
in about 15 minutes. Now, before running down the starting lineup for tonight's game, let's review the four previous games in this series. And we'll do that in just a moment after this message. Did you know that the Esso Watchdog never sleeps? That's the reason why Esso Heating Oil customers sleep so well and so warmly. Burns and McBride, your Esso Heating Oil distributor, has radio dispatch trucks that are instantly on the job whenever you need oil burner service, both day or night, any hour, any weather. Which is good to know if your old oil burner should start giving you trouble on a cold winter night. If you're not already a customer of Burns and McBride, why not give them a call today or tomorrow at 656-5110. That's 656-5110. Instant oil burner service is just another good reason why you're better off with Burns and McBride. The series between Silesia Allen and Middletown stands at two victories apiece. A 1966 game, the first, was won by the Cavaliers 14-13. Although a loss for the Sows in one of their worst years in history, it was a personal triumph for fullback Mike Webb. He had already scored the first Sal's touchdown, but his team trailed 7-6 in the third quarter. Here's what the action sounded like on WDEL. The ball is at the three-yard line. And then again, another big fourth down play facing Salesiano. Fourth down, the ball at the two, and they need a yard for a first down. Can you imagine more drama than this? Sally's just turning 7-6. Bernie Stools in the ball game. Another big yard needed. It's been slow and tedious against the determined Cavalier defense. Here comes the play. It's fourth down and 80 yards. For the first down, three yards for the touchdown. Over the left side and into the end zone. It's touchdown for the Seattle. Mike Webb scoring for the Sally. Middletown roared right back to win that first game when with 4.50 left in the game, quarterback Sonny Merkel passed six yards to Webster for the score to tie and then Merkel hit Perry with a pass after the TD to make the final Middletown 14, Salesi Adam 13. Merkel, who went on to play at Delaware, hit on 10 of 14 passes for 93 yards. In 1967, Middletown, the week before the Sally's game, had their 53-game winning streak stopped by Newark. Mike Webb, then a junior, scored first to give the Sows a 7-0 lead. But on the first play after the kickoff, Middletown's John Branner electrifies the crowd with this play. And about three minutes remaining in the first quarter. High formation for Middletown. Now they're on the move. Here's the handoff on an inside reverse. Branner. Branner out to the 40. Branner down the sideline. Branner makes it. Branner's at the 50. Branner's at the 30. He's to the 10. He's to the 10. He's to the 5. It's down Middletown. on an inside reverse just to the 40 yard line of Middletown appeared to slip the Sally's came over to the sideline but they couldn't clap him and Brandon scoots all the way down some 65 yards for the score now Middletown to go for the point to try and tie it up here's the play Reed passing out on the right side he makes the connection the pass is complete and the ball carrier drops by the goal line Percy Milling got the pass and was dropped at the one by Tony Nellinger. And with time out on the field, the score is Salesi Adams 7, Middletown 6. Middletown scored again in the second quarter to lead 12-7. to 7. But in the third quarter, quarterback Chuck Dabrowski of Salesi Adams went in from the two-yard line. And the South scored again in the third quarter. Mike Webb went in to wrap it up 21-18. The Lazy Adam right down there again inside the five. The Lazy Adam crowd going wild now as this motion to the left side. And on the play, it's big Mike Webb. Webb is back in the ball game. Webb hits over the left side. Webb is in the end zone. Touchdown to Lazy Adam. In the game, Webb again scored two touchdowns. Now the Cavaliers' soft quarterback, Scotty Ream, connected on TD passes to Herky Billings and Andy Kale. The 1968 battle was a seesaw affair, won by the Souths, 32-16, and one in which Mike Webb was again the hero, scoring three times. Middletown took the early lead in the first quarter, 2 to nothing on a safety. Dabrowski got the Souths on the board in the second quarter to lead 6-2. to two. In the third quarter, Middletown's Parker scored to make it Middletown 9-6. to six. 
Then Webb regained the lead for the Sallies at 13 to 9. But the Cavaliers, Jay Copper, went in for another Middletown score. And it was 16 to 13, Middletown, at the end of the third quarter. The fourth period belonged to the Sounds, with Webb punching over twice from short yardage. One of his scores was set up on this play. Sabrowski rolls out to the right. He wants to pass. He fires down on the right side. And it is completed. Completed to Mike Gallagher with our vision once again. Blocked with it down in the right corner inside the five. Hertzke building made the stop. Gallagher gathered it in. And we're still trying to peer around there, Fred, at the two-yard line. Fred indicates to us as he stands up here to get a better view at the two-yard line. And second down coming up with goal to go. The Brownsie pass good to Gallagher. Again, vision block. Keep an eye on it, Fred. In the middle. He's in, Bill. Touchdown to Lacey Adam. It is Mike Webb. Webb notched his third tally of the night. It's stuck it down. Out on the left side is Fuzzy Morrow, a flanker, but the play is up the middle on the draw. Mike Webb, Mike Webb to the 10, he's to the 5, breaks the tackle, touchdown to Lazy Adams! One yard TD pass from Dabrowski to Tom Joswick ended the scoring at the gun on the last play. The final, South 32, Middletown 16. The 1969 game was the only shutout in the series, won by Middletown, 32 to nothing. Here's how it went. All the scoring came in the second and third quarters. Clock is moving down to less than a minute to play now. Here in this first half, Middletown sporting a six to nothing lead. 30 seconds they go. Middletown, will they be satisfied to play possession football and run out the clock? Or do they want to hang up more points before going to the locker room? Revis back to pass. He hits Billings. Billings in the clear. At the 40 of the Salesiana Ball Club. He's got the speed. He's to the 20. He's to the 10. Five touchdowns. Salesiana cannot stop Ricky Billings, who's in the end zone for Middletown. Then Joe Todd, who's playing again in tonight's game went on a rampage. He went over from two yards out, and then came this play, with Salesiana in possession, deep in Middletown territory. But here's where Middletown gets tough. The ball is up the seven. It's third down, and about seven. The play. Into the middle. Fumble picked up by Joe Todd of Middletown. Todd turns on the speed. He's being pursued by Tucker, but Todd's got the speed. He's out distancing Tucker. He's inside the 20. He's to the 10. It's a touchdown, Middletown. Then, with time running out in the third quarter, Todd was at it again. The ball was spotted at the Salesiana 43 yard line. First down for the Cavaliers. Left end split. Flanker on the left side for Middletown. Reem sends the draw up the middle. It's Todd. Todd's going to go. Todd's to the 20. Todd's to the 15. Todd's in. Touchdown, Middletown. Again, Middletown is on the board on a 42-yard scamper right up the middle by Joe Todd, his third touchdown of the evening. That end of the scoring, and Middletown walked away with a 32 to nothing victory. There have been some outstanding plays and players in the series. Webb of Salesiana, now a linebacker for Notre Dame, has scored seven of a total of ten touchdowns by Salesiana. Others who have stood out are Dabrowski, Kevin Riley, and Angie Rossi of the Sals, and Merkel, Ream, Billings, and Stokes of Middletown. The game tonight will undoubtedly see more heroes, and they could come from among such as Joe Todd and Kenny Billings of Middletown, and John Murray and Joe George of Salesiana. We'll be back with the starting lineups for tonight's game in just a moment. Just as teamwork is an important part of tonight's football game being brought to you by Shawcross Chevrolet, teamwork is an important part of being first at Shawcross, and putting you first keeps them first. First in service, first in selection, first in satisfaction. Bill and Fred Shawcross and the entire sales team work together to make you a happy customer. So, when you buy your new car, remember this. The Shawcross team has a great selection. And if you're in the market for a late model used car, 
you'll be sure and see their winning display as well as their complete line of new and used trucks. If you want a winner, root for Shell Cross, where putting you first keeps Chevrolet first. Shell Cross Chevrolet in Middletown, the little dealer with a big deal for you. And back again here at Middletown High School Field. The Cavaliers now coming out to an ovation from their fans. And we're seated directly behind the middle stand, Middletown stand. On the other side, the Sows have already come out on the field. The field continues to dry out. The weather is not particularly nippy. It's a little bit damp. But it probably could be termed as the most mild weather we've had in the series, which is now in its fifth game. The Cavaliers this year have rolled up 364 points against nine opponents. They have been scored upon with only 47 points. They've knocked off P.S. DuPont, Dickinson, T. Lawar, A.I. DuPont, Claymont, Howard, Gunning, Bedford, Del Castle, and Archmere. The foul is a total of 157 points in their eight games played, in which they've won five and lost three. Their opponents have tallied 59 against Salesian and Fence. The wins have been against Conrad, Bishop Iredin, P.S. DuPont, Williamson, and Archmere. The losses to Bishop Carroll of Washington and the last two ball games in succession, Baltimore Poly and Malvern. And of course, as most football fans in the state know who follow high school ball, both of those losses came on block punt. The leading scorer, of course, for Middletown Cavaliers and in the state is Joe Todd, who is a shoe-in for the state scoring leader. And he will be the fourth in Middletown history. Simmendinger in 1962, Saunders in 1944, and Merkel in 1966. And now it's Joe Todd. The Sows have had only one man who's had a share of the scoring crown. That was Harry Manelski back in 1956. Of course, the all-time scoring leader in Delaware is Ronnie Waller of Laurel back in 1950 when he totaled 213 points, and that record seems safe to stand for quite a while. Well, both ball clubs are out on the field now. We'll have the toss of the coin in just a moment. The officials for tonight's game are from the Newcastle County Football Officials Association. The referee is Tom Mason. The umpire, Bill Crowther. The linesman is Al Burns. The judge, Bill Kappa. And keeping the clock, the official time here tonight at Middletown Field is Bob Peanuts Riley. On the uh, line markers and the chains, Denny Sullivan, Joe Gardner, and Ron Lane. So Adam sends all of his seniors out to midfield. The tri-captains for Middletown are Todd, Kirby, and Lovett. And we're getting ready to go here with football, awaiting the toss of the coin. Before a crowd now, which has swelled, I would say, to about 10,000. As the weather at first, of course, probably was a factor in keeping many fans from coming out here to the ball game tonight. But as soon as the rain stopped, more seemed to come in, and we'll have to say that the crowd now is in the neighborhood of about 10,000, and that, of course, is an unofficial guess. Well, there's the toss of the coin, and we'll see in just a moment whom referee Tom Mason indicates wins the toss. Middletown wins the toss. They will elect to receive, move the ball from left to right. And running down the starting lineups now for Middletown's Cavaliers on offense, the quarterback is Kenny Billings, the halfback for Darrell Yellowday and Joe Todd, the fullback is Charles Kirby. The left hand, Larry Fullman. The left tackle, Jack Grove. Left guard is Bobby Carroll. The center, Sam Miller. The right guard is John Huggins. The right tackle, Frank Wachowski. The right end is Billy Levin. That's the starting offensive lineup for Middletown Cavaliers. We'll give you the starting lineup defensively for the Lazy Anum. Uh, but right now, we're going to listen to our national anthem. The weather, incidentally, apparently has prevented the band from appearing here tonight at Middletown High School Field. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we're being requested to stand for the national anthem. To play football, we ask that you protect the boys, let the best team win, and let us all be good sports. We ask it in your name. Amen. An invocation given here before the ball game gets underway, as you heard here on WDEL Radio 115 in Wilmington, Delaware. Bill Piper with Fred Ang, and we're ready to go in just a moment, but now our national anthem.
Well, now back for the uh, defensive starting lineup for Salesian. As Middletown has elected to kick off. Left end is Buddy Dicta. Mike Antonini at left tackle. Steve Bissett is the right tackle. The right end is Joe George. The linebackers are Mark Carney, Bob McMahon, the cornerbacks Dan Bason, Frank Dunkowski, the defensive.